begun to feel to me almost as if independent film and studio film, which had begun to converge in right through the era of you know the late 90s, mid 90s, Fox Searchlight, it all looked like it was coming together. It looks like they're moving radically apart, like into just just far, far different universes. Uh, is that happening? I mean, do, do any of the three of you anticipate doing studio work, or are you going to be on this side of an enormous divide now and perhaps not make a leap back into the other? Is that me? Yeah, well, okay. you, you've yeah. been there, and yeah. James... You could I don't know. Sure I mean, there new. may be certain kinds of studio movies that you could, you know, see yourself doing. Um, but uh, but the, divide is, the divide is getting... is definitely... I, I experience it as a lot greater. I mean, don't, I mean, you know, there's not a movie. There's, there's all the middle has fallen out of the industry. All those kind of, you know, a great thrill, Jagged Edge. Where would that movie get made now? You know, I mean, and it's a really good thriller. You know, and and that's a hard, and knowing where those are, knowing where a, a comedy for. I mean, I don't know how Soap Dish would get made now. You know, I don't know where that would sit in the world. Um, sure. So, uh, do you ever see yourself going there, or do you, do you really see yourself dwelling in a separate universe? And no, I could definitely see myself going there. I mean, at yeah. this point, I'm, I'm I'm remaining open to all options, and you know, actually, currently, am am possibly going to be um, rewriting and directing a movie for Fox Searchlight. So, uh. Uh, can can you say anything at all about that particular project? What what it is, what it's like, um, the nature of it. I mean, I'm, I'm interested from the, just the standpoint of seeing where the bridges and connections still exist. You mean story-wise? Well, story-wise, project-wise, anything that you're comfortable saying. You know, just yeah, so that I we mean, can you know, understand I, how the director of America, you know, could sure. step still into a quasi-studio world. Um, what kind of project or where are you with it? Um, it's in very early stages of development, so I would take it on as, as kind of a page one rewrite. And it's um, it's a story kind of about female empowerment, you could say. Um, it's uh, it's a dramedy with a lot of it's a drama with a lot of humor. Um, and I would say that those are the two elements that really Emrica has in common with this other project and a few other things. Do you uh, other than Taken, you know, then cooking and making bolognese. Do you make time for a studio meeting every now and again? Yeah, I do all the time because we were talking about the, you're trying to find the movie that's in the, the you call it the middle. I was saying that the truth and spectacle thing is really what I was trying to say. So yeah, of course, all the time. I mean, the thing I'm doing next is uh, hopefully in that place. But I don't know. I feel like the and yes, you you brought there. I think the gap is widened because the there has been a kind of collective decision to make, really to focus on one segment of the movie-going audience and to keep, movie-going is kind of a habit, you know. So I'll, I'll talk to my dad who's, you know, pretty pretty crusty guy and I'll say, you know, uh, he'll say, well, I can't see any of these pictures. There's no good pictures to see. And my dad is, you know, s he's 73 years old, got tons of time on his hands and not a lot, but a little bit of disposable income, perfect person to go see a movie. At, what's he going to go see? I, he's not going to go see, like, Dark Knight. I mean, maybe he would enjoy it. I doubt it. But, you know, it's possible. Which is, I mean, I, I, you know, I found things about Dark Knight I thought were great. But I'm saying for him, that's a whole segment of the audience that's not being at attended to. And, you know, it's uh, very instructional because apparently the number one movie on Netflix last year was The Conversation, which is a completely weird thing to predict. So it tells you that there is a whole... Well, no, I mean, it is funny, but at the same time, it tells you there's a whole segment, doesn't it, of the uh, audience, American moving audience, that's totally, uh, like, they're not even catering to at all. So it is there, but they're just, those, f like, 42-year-old women who are English teachers who might like the conversation, they're not going, they're just not going to the movies. They're Netflix, they're Netflixing uh, Jules and Jim. That's what they're doing. And so the movie business got those people out of the habit of going. And the only people going now are, like, 13-year-olds, you know. No, but it's true. I mean, that's who goes to the movies. Wow, I'm such a, I don't mean to be a downer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. I, 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 sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just thinking about, you know, Universal not very long ago, you know, just put all their drama into turnaround. They just put all of their drama into turnaround, and some of it with big people attached to it. And they came out and they said they want to make tentpole movies and broad comedies and, and cartoon movies. You know, and one of the that, scarier things that happened right at the time that occurred is that menu. this is all in the limited. wake of last year's Oscar race. And 
there were a couple of companies, uh, Paramount being one, Universal being another, that were, um, if you talk to the executives in the wake, you know, Benjamin Button, Frost Nixon, they were bitter, they were angry, they were unhappy for the simple reason that they had just dragged through a five-month process of becoming the foil to what they knew was going to win. You know, so they spent $50 million on a picture, had to go to all the dinners, and they were there as window dressing, knowing from the beginning that Slumdog Millionaire was going to walk away with the prize, and came to the conclusion that that part of the apparatus was broken, that, that the whole awards game, which corrupt and awful as it was, did give you a platform to float these pictures, didn't work for them anymore. And that's kind of apocalyptic when they, they pulled out. I mean, it does take the platforms out from under. And the, I just think there's way less interest in, I mean, you know, the, most of the people who are working at the studios, there's fewer and fewer filmmakers and more and more people who come from, from a marketing world, and that's what they feel, that's where they feel their responsibility, mm -hmm. you know? is in terms of marketing, having a concept they can market. I mean, this is, I'm not saying anything well, that yeah, everybody but doesn't know, but, but it is, it is obviously, it has shifted hugely. If you look at the people who were making Nashville and making Five Easy Pieces and making the, the, the Godfather movies at Paramount, I mean, that's a different breed. They're completely different people from different backgrounds who think their job is a different thing. <laughs>